So far we've focused primarily on dimerization reactions in which two copies of the same aldehyde react, one is nucleophile and one is electrophile, in an aldol addition or condensation process. But the natural expansion of the scope of this reaction is to ask what would happen if we mixed two different carbonyl compounds, say in the presence of base, and tried to run an aldol reaction. Is there some way to selectively make one the nucleophile and the other the electrophile? Unfortunately, the answer is generally no. And this is even true if we take some pains to generate completely an enolate and then hit it with the other carbonyl compound. So for example, in this case, say we wanted methyl ethyl ketone to act as the nucleophile. One approach we might take is to hit just methyl ethyl ketone with a strong base like LDA. Granted, this would generate the less substituted enolate, but let's say we could generate this enolate in 100% yield by using this very strong kinetic base in the presence of methyl ethyl ketone without introducing this compound yet at all. Could we then take this compound, let's call methyl ethyl ketone compound A and this compound compound B, could we then take compound B and hit this enolate with that compound and expect pure product from the use of this as the nucleophile and compound B as the electrophile. Let's draw that out really quickly just to make this discussion fairly concrete. After acidic workup, we would end up with something like this with addition of the alpha carbon of methyl ethyl ketone, the methyl alpha carbon, to the carbonyl carbon of the cyclopentanone starting material. Let's say this is what we want to happen. Will this actually take place? Unfortunately, the answer is no, because the enolate, in addition to being a good nucleophile, is also a quite strong Bronsted base. And this means that it will have absolutely no problem engaging with the other reaction partner in, instead of nucleophilic addition, proton transfer processes. So this enolate, in fact, can grab a proton from our desired electrophile. This in turn produces an enolate or a nucleophilic version of the molecule that we'd like to act as the electrophile. And this is clearly a problem because now this is going to act as a nucleophile with respect to methyl ethyl ketone as the electrophile. And that will lead to undesired aldol products. In order to make a mixed aldol reaction work, we actually have to be very careful about how we think about designing the substrates and reaction conditions. And there are two general strategies, really three, but we're going to look at two on this slide and one on the next, to perform aldol reactions between different nucleophilic and electrophilic partners. The two strategies on this slide really differ in whether the controlling factor is thermodynamic or kinetic. In nature and you'll see what I mean when we lay out the possibilities here. The two strategies listed here are called crossed and directed aldol reactions. In a crossed aldol condensation we do what we did in the acid catalyzed example. We take advantage of a non-enolyzable electrophile, in other words an electrophile that lacks alpha hydrogens that cannot form an enol or enolate. Benzaldehyde is one classic example of this and any aldehyde that lacks alpha hydrogens can be used in this capacity. So something like an aldehyde with a tert butyl group or any sort of quaternary center can also be used as an electrophile in this context. In addition to using an electrophilic partner that is non-enolyzable, that cannot form an enol or enolate, we use a nucleophilic partner with one set of alpha hydrogens. And what that means is the two alpha carbons are essentially equivalent in reactivity. When that happens, we've basically narrowed down the possibilities to only one, since there's only one unique alpha carbon, only one unique set of alpha hydrogens is another way to think about this, and there's only one unique electrophilic carbon, and that is this guy here. So provided we can avoid self-reaction of the ketone with itself, which is easy to do by designing our reaction conditions the right way, using, for example, relatively small concentrations of the nucleophilic partner, we can selectively get a reaction in which the non-enolyzable compound acts as electrophile and the enolyzable compound acts as nucleophile to give a single product. And here, because we used alkoxide base, the aldol condensation product forms, the alpha-beta unsaturated ketone.
This is essentially the thermodynamic approach since we're forming a thermodynamic enolate and then hitting it with an electrophile that itself cannot be deprotonated. We can also use a kinetic approach, forming a kinetic enolate via the treatment of the molecule we want to act as the nucleophile with LDA, followed by treatment with an aldehyde electrophile. And it's important that this be an aldehyde to avoid those proton transfer issues that we just talked about. The reason the electrophile has to be an aldehyde is that the aldehyde is relatively unhindered at the electrophilic carbon. This makes nucleophilic addition by the enolate to that carbon faster than would be proton transfer processes. For example, a proton transfer from the alpha carbon of the aldehyde to the ketone enolate is slower than the addition process under these conditions. So this looks a bit magical, but it does have some limitations. Notice that we have to use the very strong base LDA and the kinetic enolate is formed. And so if we're using a ketone with different alpha carbons, the less substituted enolate will form selectively. That's not an issue here, but it is in general. And the second key limitation of directed aldol condensation is that we have to use an aldehyde electrophile. This method also leads generally to the beta hydroxy ketone or aldehyde product, the product of aldol addition. If we want to form the aldol condensation product, often heating with acid or base is required after running this process.